uh, ChatGPT has taken the world by storm because it knows how to answer people's questions in a human-like way. And this is very exciting for us developers because it opens up new scenarios of how we can interact with our users. Um, so one of the things that ChatGPT does under the hood is that it uses large language model that is just really good at predicting the next sequence of words. And this is why it answers our questions so accurately. But sometimes it doesn't do it so well. So the model has limitations, and one of them being that it hasn't seen data beyond September 2021. For example, it doesn't know who won the NBA title in 2022 because it has never seen that data before. But we could prompt ChatGPT differently by providing a context and a question so it can formulate a coherent answer that will satisfy our users. We can do that by asking ChatGPT to answer the question based on the context below. We're going to provide a context and the question and ask ChatGPT to answer. We're going to use the same question as before, who won the NBA title in 2022? And the context is something that I actually found on Google that I'm going to paste right here. Okay, so let's run this and see what it does. Great, now ChatGPT seemed to know enough about the question to answer it correctly. And this is actually pretty exciting for developers because that means that we can help users to use a ChatGPT-like application to learn more about things that the model hasn't seen before. For example, your user could ask your chatbot to answer questions regarding your product. In this example, we'll see uh, how we're using this chatbot to answer questions about Neon and Postgres. And even though the model has probably seen Postgres's documentation during training, it has never seen Neon's because Neon wasn't available before September 2021. In this example, we're asking about Neon and it's answering the question about the element and not the database. But if we provide the appropriate context from the database, uh, then ChatGPT can formulate a coherent answer that our users will expect. This context is pulled from uh, Neon and Postgres's documentations that we first extracted as text and stored in the database. Then we used embeddings and PG vector uh, to search and feed the ChatGPT with the right context. In this example, ChatGPT answers the question about how to create the branch using an API, is using the API, just like you'd find it in the docs. So in this presentation, we will discuss OpenAI, its API, different the different models, and some limitations. We will also cover what the text completion is, tokenizers, embeddings, and how to use Postgres and the PG Vector extension to calculate distances among embeddings so we can provide ChatGPT with the right context to answer our users' questions. So this is a mouthful and we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. Let's have a look at the code and see how we can interact with ChatGPT to create text completions. Text completions is what OpenAI API uses to create an answer to the user's question. To create a text completion, we use the chat completions endpoint, we pass the OpenAI API key, and send the model and messages parameters. We can use either GPT 3.5 Turbo or GPT-4 models. It really depends on what you want to do. GPT-4 is uh, more capable, but GPT-3 uh, is uh, cheaper, also faster, optimized for chat, and is more than enough for our little application right here. Regarding the messages parameters, there are three types of messages. First, there is the system message to tell ChatGPT that is a helpful assistant. The, there is a user message, which is uh, the user's question, and the assistant message, which is the reply. In this example, I'll make an API call to my API to get the answer to the question, can you help me with Postgres? In my response object, I'm interested in this message object right here, where we get the assistant message and the reply to the question. And since the messages object is an array, I can have a, a longer conversation history for ChatGPT to better understand the question. In this example, I added a few messages and asked ChatGPT if it can create a simple user table for me. Because I mentioned user table and I referenced Postgres before, we're giving ChatGPT more context and enough information to answer the question uh, more accurately.
and here it's creating a user table. We can have a quite long uh, chat history between our users and ChatGPT, which makes sense to persist in a database. Instead of sending the entire message history to the API, we can send only the last message, get the history from Postgres, and then create the text completion. This allows us to have smaller payloads, and we'll also see that this will be handy when we introduce the notion of token later on. In this code, we send one message at a time instead of sending the entire history. We insert the message into the database, into the message table. Then we get the message history before creating the text completion. We use uh, this message table right here, which has an ID, a content, a role, and also a created, which is a timestamp. Let's recap what we just saw. We have a function that takes messages as a parameter. Uh, and that makes an API call to the chat completion endpoint and expects a text completion in return. At first, while well, we're sending the entire message history to the API, we then persist the message history in the database so we can send only the last message. We insert that message to the table, get the history, then create the text completion. Let's have a closer look to our messages here. We spoke about the different types of messages, we have a system message that tells ChatGPT what it needs to do. In our case, it tells it to be a helpful assistant. We also have the user message, which is our user's question, and the assistant message, which is the reply. So here, one of the question is, how big can my message history be? In order to understand that, let's introduce the notion and the concept of tokens. Tokens, to put it simply, is uh, four characters in the English language. Uh, every time we take we create a text completion, ChatGPT cal calculates the number of tokens or characters um, and checks whether those tokens are within the, the, the model's limit. Why is this important? Because, for example, the ChatGPT Turbo model has a limit of 4,096 tokens, and those tokens are split between completion and the prompt. In other words, between the input and the output. For example, if my message uh, if my messages sum up to 2,000 tokens, that means that I can only have a completion of about 2,096 tokens. So what happens if I go over those limits? If I have a total message history of 4,097 tokens in my input, uh, which is over the limit, then I'm going to uh, I'm not going to be able to create a text completion, and my API call will will fail. Another scenario is what happens if my message history is 4,090 tokens. In this case, I'm only leaving six tokens for ChatGPT to create a text completion, which is likely not going to make a long enough text completion for our user to be satisfied with the answer. Luckily for us, there is a way to manage the number of tokens we pass to ChatGPT to ensure that our text completions are always successful. One of them is using OpenAI's tokenizer. So let me copy this uh, text right here and paste it. And we can see that the tokenizer calculates the number of tokens and help visualize them in a very nice way. If I scroll down, I can also see that uh, I can use this GPT-3 encoder package in Node.js, which I can show you a code right here. In this code, uh, we use the uh, encode function from the GPT-3 encoder package and calculate the number of tokens for each of our messages. Once we do that, we want to keep only the messages so their cumulative number of tokens doesn't exceed the maximum number of tokens that we specified before. In our case, we specified 20, uh, 220, but uh, this number is arbitrary. You can use whatever number of tokens that you want. One of the limitations of this approach is that the GPT-3 encoder uh, package doesn't work with edge functions because it uses uh, the FS and some other Node.js functions. And I personally prefer to pass on this logic to my database. And this is why we have a new extension called pgTickToken, which is a wrapper around OpenAI's tokenizer that helps me to manage my tokens at the database level. So it does the same thing, but it does it uh, on the database instead. One thing I like about this approach is that I can use uh, Postgres's generated columns to calculate tokens every time we insert text. And here is the query that helps me do that. In this query, also, we ask uh, Postgres to return the latest messages, 
So the cumulative sum of the tokens doesn't exceed the maximum number of tokens that we want. Both approaches with GPT-3 encoder and with PGTIC tokens are valid, but I personally have a preference for handling all that logic in my database instead. All right, well, we spoke about OpenAI, we spoke about the API and its models, we spoke about how to create a simple text completion, and also we've seen what tokenizers are. So now let's jump into embeddings and uh, talk about uh, PG Vector and how we can use it to get the questions context from the database. If you remember at the beginning of the presentation, we asked OpenAI or ChatGPT who won the NBA title in 2022, and he couldn't answer the question. We then gave it a hint and generated uh, the answer based on the context. Similarly, our application and, ch uh, and our chatbot here knows how to answer Neon and Postgres related questions because it knows how to get the context from, uh, the, uh, from the documentation. And this is possible because we stored the entire documentation as text in the database. Let me show you how this looks. We split the text into chunks of less than 500 tokens and stored it along with its embedding in the documents table. Embeddings, as you can see, are arrays of numbers. Those numbers range from minus one to one. And you can see embeddings as being descriptions of the text. And they are helpful to understand which texts are similar in meaning. So why are embeddings useful to get the context? Let's take this very simple example using the words orange, apple, dog, and cat. Here we want to understand which of these words are similar in meaning. And for that, we use a, a feature vector, which gives us the representation in meaning of each of these words. From this uh, matrix here, we can understand that orange is likely to be a fruit, it's unlikely to be an animal, and it's also possibly to be a color. We know that an apple is not human, that it's not an animal, but it's a fruit, etc. So this way, we know which words and which sentences could be similar to each other, and we could calculate the distances to understand which of these sentences are closer in meaning to each other. And OpenAI gives us the possibility to create embeddings to, to, to do just that. Here's the code on how to create an embedding. So we use the embeddings endpoint, and we also pass our OpenAI API key. And we're using the text embedding a ADA002 model to generate the embedding. In this curl command, I pass just the text as a parameter and it quickly generates this array. So what do I do with this array now? As we mentioned before, we turned our entire documentation into embeddings and we stored it in the database. So now every time we have a question, we turn that question into an uh, embedding, and then we calculate the distances with all the embeddings that we have stored in the database to, end, to find the context. And this is exactly what PG Vector helps us to do. So PG Vector calculates these distances in a very efficient way because it uses the nearest neighbor algorithm and avoid table scans. Visually, you can imagine that our questions embedding is here. PG Vector then finds the nearest neighbors which contain the texts that are the closest in meaning to our question. So let me show you what the query looks like. This query calculates the distances against the entire table. You can see here that it is also calculating the cumulative number of tokens. If I scroll down, I can see that this cumulative sum of tokens is quite big. So what I wanna do is limit uh, the total number of tokens to 1500. If I run this, then I have all this text that I can use as the, the context that I can pass to ChatGPT to create the text completion. I know this is a lot to take in, but in simple words, this query helps me find the text in our documentation that corresponds the most to the question. Then the text, uh, the query returns uh, the context that ChatGPT will use to answer the question. All right, let's put it all together now. First, we have a client that sends a message to our API. We can insert the message to Neon to get the history later. Then we create an embedding based on the message using the OpenAI API. We said that embeddings are just arrays of numbers that range from minus one to one, 
which are a representation uh, in meaning of our text. We use the message embedding and PG vector to calculate the cosine distances with the embeddings that are stored in our da database that correspond to our uh, documentation. The rows with the closest distances will give us the context that we need. We then get the history and pass both the history and the context to ChatGPT to create a text completion. Once we do that, we can return the text completion to the client and insert it uh, into our database so we can keep the history up to date. Here's how it looks in code. Here we want a history of 1500 tokens and also a context of 1500 tokens. This sums up to 3000, which means I'm leaving about 1000 token, uh, tokens for my response, which is plenty in my case. We first insert the message into the database, then we create the embedding using the uh, API uh, call right here and the embeddings endpoint. We also use the model and uh, text embedding ADA002. Once we do that, we turn this embedding into a string and we calculate the cosine distances using this query here. This query also returns the distances which cumulative sum of tokens is less than the maximum to uh, context tokens that we specified before. Now we have the context we get the history and we have everything we need to create text completion. I changed the system message a little bit here to say that it's an enthusiastic developer that likes to help people with Postgres and Yarn questions and answer the question based on the context below. All right, we have the system message. We add the context and the question as user messages. We insert the result into the database and then we return it to the client. All right, so this is it. For today's talk. I hope you enjoyed this talk and you'll be able to create chatbots using OpenAI's API and Neon. And I look forward to seeing what you build. Thanks a lot.